I said with my parents, both grew up on farms in Slovenia. In the 1950s, they immigrated to Australia separately in search of um, peace and the safety and peace and the opportunities. Despite growing up in uh, an area called Shaves, so very close together, they first met while living in Sydney at a dance at the Paddington Town Hall, organised by the Slovenian community here in Australia. My parents embraced their second home. Like most of their generation, they worked hard, they assimilated, they raised an Australian family by the river in Sydney. But they never lost their deep emotional connection to Selena, and they never let their children lose it either. As kids, we learned the language badly. <laughs> we were taught the history, and we travelled back um, whenever we could. And if I ever said that our family was from Yugoslavia, my mother was pretty quick to correct me we from Slovenia. We're here today to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Slovenian independence, but really we're here to celebrate 1400 years of continuous culture and language and history. Because Slovenians were a people long before we were a nation. We maintained our culture and identity through centuries of history through the Holy Roman Empire, through Habsburg rule, through the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, through Nazi occupation which banned the Slovene language, through Socialist Yugoslavia, and finally after every effort to subsume Slovenian culture and to deny Slovenia's distinct identity, we achieved announced on the 25th of June 1991, 30 years ago. The story of Slovenian independence is one that we are rightly proud of. At first, Slovenia tried to claim independence peacefully. The question of independence was put to a democratic vote, and almost 90% of citizens voted to make Slovenia a sovereign nation. But then, when it was necessary, Slovenes fought for their freedom. I was just by coincidence there in Lubana at the time in 1991. I got one of the last trains out before the borders closed and the 10 days war started. And I remember what a phenomenally electric time it was uh, in Lubana. I remember there was an enormous sense of excitement watching them sitting out in the evening, seeing what a beautiful place it is to sit out and enjoy the enjoy the long summer evening, sitting there with my cousins, um, watching the fireworks. Uh, but there was also um, some sense of dread of what was to come. As I was leaving the next day, as I planned to, I could hear over the loudspeakers um, in the, the club into the main marketplace uh, announcements asking people to drive their trucks out onto the highway or their cars to try and block the progress of the Yugoslav army. There were sirens going off, there were people walking around. Uh, the first time I ever seen people really in Lugano eating fatigues and guns. And amongst all that movement and all that noise, the Bavitsas, the grandmothers at the marketplace, still selling the cinchas, the insects, the sayago, the cicada, little mushrooms, wild mushrooms, uh, wild strawberries, wild blueberries, picked in the forest, and these tiny little wild cyclamen, the most beautiful scented flowers you have ever smelt in your life. The smell that takes me right back to Slovenia. If it wasn't Daniel versus Goliath, it was close. Thousands of these Slovenian soldiers were civilians only a few days earlier. And Yugoslav soldiers were still in barracks right across Slovenia, including in Lugana. The Slovenian military itself was a new organisation built in secret at short notice. The Yugoslav generals joked that if it had taken the Americans five weeks to defeat Saddam Hussein with Operation Desert Storm, it would take a few hours to defeat the Slovenians. Well, the war only lasted 10 days, but it didn't end in defeat. It took enormous bravery uh, to stop the progress of, of the Yugoslav military and within a couple of days push it back. Some people think about this as a bloodless war, but it cost 75 lives including 19 Slovenes. But this time gave birth to independence and within 12 months, Slovenia was a fully recognised member of the United Nations. By 2004, it was a member of the European Union and a full member of the European Union and NATO. By any measure, 
Slovenia is a success story. In a region that has seen too much violence, Slovenia has established a robust and pluralist democracy. Where power changes hands peacefully and where different groups work together towards consensus. Slovenia is peaceful and it's prosperous and as you can see for yourselves, it's beautiful. Um, in 2010, Slovenia became a member of the OECD. It's, a develop, it's developed a diverse, sophisticated, modern economy with a successful manufacturing sector making cars, consumer electronics and pharmaceuticals. It attracts tourists to its beautiful coastline and mountains. Slovenian school students perform well above the OECD average in reading, maths and science, and more than 90% of Slovenians speak a second language, most of them much better than that. <laughs> Slovenia might be a small country with two million citizens, but it has always punched above its weight. In fact, Slovenia was home to the oldest wooden wheel found in Europe, um, and it's also home uh, to the oldest, what they think is a musical instrument, made of bone from a bear. <laughs> I think these two, um, I think these two uh, things neatly encapsulate the twin Slovenian traditions of industry and culture. It's these traits that have made Slovenians so successful, and it's these traits that Slovenian and Australians brought to their new land. When I look at my parents' generation, I am in awe of their hard work, their commitment to family and community. My dad was one of many that worked on the snowy hydro scheme before going on to work for Qantas. But wherever Slovenian Australians moved across this nation, from the sugarcane farms in central Queensland to the tanneries of Victoria to caring roles in our hospitals, they worked hard. Wherever there was work, people would follow it. I can't imagine the courage that it took for their generation of migrants, not just from Slovenia, but from all around the world, to travel to a country leaving behind their language, their family, everything that was familiar to them. But even if you leave by choice, the home, the tug of home is still strong. And for most people, that never really stops. There's a poem by the Slovenian Australian writer, Bert Pivas, which describes this experience and feeling as a vine transplanted into a foreign soil. We could not at first push our roots into this ground or feel cool under the shade of the gum. Thinking back, you can only imagine how strange it would have been for those um, Europeans people from all around the world who made this journey to come to this strange nation with our very different landscape. But Slovenian Australians have always worked hard to integrate and to contribute, to support themselves and their community. In the second verse of this poem, a new feeling is described with a determination to establish their roots and draw the juices of this new land, becoming one entity with it. And for ages to come, they should count the coming of the Southern Cross. Over time, Slovenian Australians did establish their roots here and they have gone on to achieve amazing things. We've produced senators like Misha Leibovitz from the Liberal Party, and Australian fast bowlers like Mitchell Stark, Socceroos captains like Aurelio Vigmar and his brother Tony, another fantastic footballer. We've produced great painters, sculptors, writers, musicians, and filmmakers, poets, doctors, and professors. We've always punched above our weight. This is a very proud day for Slovenia, and it's a very proud day for Slovenian Australians. I want to finish with one of Slovenia's most cherished pieces of writing. You heard a beautiful rendition of the Slovenian National Anthem. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Zdravica by Franz Prescher, uh, the, the words of the anthem come from the poem Zdravica. Uh, and Prescher was Slovenia's national poet. And the, this um, first verse that was sung so beautifully today is particularly appropriate. Žive na vsi narodi, ki hledene dočaka dan, vode so od zahodi, pri hiri sveta bom hledan, da rojak, prosbo vsak, ne pravi, da so sedi bolj hledan. Or in English, 
God's blessing on all nations who long and work for that bright day when our earth's habitations, no war, no strife shall hold its sway, who long to see that all men free, no more shall foes but neighbours be. Thank you. Oh, the Berlin Wall, the optimism that was all around you, that we are going to build a new Europe, much better than in the previous times. Uh, that fueled our determination to seek independence. Our determination to become a full-fledged member of the international community had been rooted in the resilience of preserving our Slovenian identity throughout the centuries. It's like we have been, we would say that we are an old nation but a young state, a more European one. As a more recent example, let me go a little bit uh, more uh, into a private uh, kind of a sphere. I would like to mention my father. He just turned 90 three weeks ago. During his life, he did not move more than 30 kilometers away from his hometown. And he changed three citizenships until he became a citizen of an independent Slovenia. Nevertheless, throughout his entire life, he, remained, uh, he has remained strongly committed to his Slovenian identity. Now, when we look back, there could be many elements to assess if we have been successful in implementing the dreams of our people, especially at such an important anniversary as 30 years. Probably the easiest way would be, technically speaking, if we present the statistical data, like for example, on the increased output of steel, in some other times the extraction of coal in these uh, uh, washing machines, what we are manufacturing so in cars, etc. Or uh, perhaps the reducing working time uh, needed to purchase a somewhat costly consumer good. However, this cannot pay the true picture of our achievements. I believe that there are two criteria that should be taken into consideration. The first one is the satisfaction of people of Slovenia today in comparison to the turbulent times three decades ago. Regarding this criteria, we have successfully passed the test. According to Europe Barometer, uh, in the last pre-COVID year, 2019, 90% of Slovenians stated that they were satisfied with their life, which was 6%, uh, uh, 6 percentage point about the EU average. This maybe shows that uh, we are doing something right as a government. Uh, one of the elements contributing to this satisfaction is definitely the fact that with uh, respect to the Gini coefficient uh, measuring social inequality, Slovenia is among top three countries in the world. And then in spite of the fact that since 1991 we have transformed, uh, transformed our economy from a semi-regulated socialist type to a market and a competitive one. A low degree of social inequality provides a high level of social cohesion, which creates a, a very conducive atmosphere for creativity and business development. Just few examples that you will see what it's like, what not only um, inventing a calculator, by the way, that was a Slovenian living in the US, but he got his education before in uh, uh, Slovenia. Uh, what uh, can come out of uh, Slovenia right now, because we live in these strange times that is somehow defined by this uh, pandemic. For example, uh, all the Pfizer vaccination uh, manufactured in Belgium are produced in the so-called clean rooms that have been manufactured in Slovenia. Our provider has been an exclusive supplier to Pfizer, so it's like every Pfizer vaccine comes out of a clean room that was designed and manufactured in Slovenia. So this is our small contribution to fight this pandemic. Or for example, that um, the first uh, electric plane certified by the European Union for commercial use comes out of Slovenia. And last year, uh, one gentleman in South Australia wanted to start uh, assembling those planes, but unfortunately, this all this corona kicked in. Then, uh, I, I think that in two years in Adelaide, they will open a very fancy medical uh, facility, the first proton. Uh, uh, and this is too uh, complicated even for me. It's uh, the, the first proton facility, proton radiation facility, and a Slovenian company is going to provide the whole software. And this is the same Slovenian company is providing software for the uh, first uh, uh, reactor, fusion reactor in southern France. Or precise manufacturing device, uh, measuring devices manufactured for uh, NASA, European Space Agency, Indian Space Program, Airbus, Boeing. These are just few examples. What it's like that atmosphere that we can create.
it in Slovenia that is uh, boosting this creativity that has always been there with uh, my compatriots. Another element that uh, we believe contributes to the satisfaction of our people is a high level of nature conservation. According to the Economist Intelligence Unit, Slovenia has the highest percentage in the world, more than 50% of its territory that is under some kind of nature protection regime. A fact that one can live in, and, uh, in and enjoy pristine nature also contributes to the satisfaction with life. This is like bringing satisfaction and, I would say, and happiness to ourselves. But yeah, uh, another criterion is bringing satisfaction and, I would say, happiness to the others. So I would say here that from the first day of its independence, Slovenia has expressed this desire and interest to cooperate with all the peace-loving countries around the globe. Therefore, the second criterion for measuring our achievements should be our ability to assume international responsibilities in a way that sustains international peace, peace and stability. In order to achieve better results in this regard, Slovenia in 2004 joined two important regional organizations, the European Union and NATO, whose membership optimized the implementation of our political, economic and security goals and policies. This decision was based on, uh, based on the will of Slovenian people expressed by legislative uh, referendum. Like we voted for our uh, independence at the end of December 1990, we also voted for these two important decisions where to place the future of our country politically, economically, security-wise. And this is when it, oh, what uh, Ms. Pibersek mentioned before. Uh, it's like that, uh, the era that apparently Jefferson looked into very old uh, traditions of selecting leaders in the Slovenian society, we have always consulted our people when it comes to very difficult decisions, what to do, where to go. Among other things, uh, in these 30 years, important uh, uh, responsible tasks, tasks that we held was the non-permanent membership of, of the UN Security Council and the presidency of the European Union in 2008. In less than a week, Slovenia will for the second time assume the presidency of the Council of the European Union, taking over from the Portuguese friends who have done an excellent job. Without going into the detailed description of our presidency priorities, I want to stress that we aim at strengthening the uh, European Union's resilience internally and externally. This should allow the European Union to, to improve its ability to respond even better to the situations posing challenges to the global and regional peace and stability. However, I would like to point out that the European Union is not just a global actor, but a permanent and undeniable proof that peoples who were entangled in different conflicts for centuries can not only live together in peace, but they can also jointly create a better future for the generations to come. People of Slovenia strongly believe that, uh, in the European Union and its core values. This belief proves that in 1991 we did not declare independence in order to create an isolated entity. On the contrary, our independence served as a tool for stronger and deeper cooperation with all the countries in the region that embrace the same values and per uh, pursue the same international goals. Last, but definitely not least, I have to point out the role Australia played in understanding the will of people of Slovenia to live in an independent country. Australia was among the first countries around the globe to recognize Slovenia. In the last three decades, our two countries have established excellent relations that are structured around almost identical understanding of international community, especially as both countries are strongly committed to the rules-based international order. We are confident that our relations will continue to grow stronger in the years to come. An indispensable element of excellent and close relations between Slovenia and Australia is the presence of Slovenian community in, uh, in Australia. Here, uh, one of the, Ms. Plibersek as one of the most uh, visible members, some others who are here in the audience today. It's, I would really like to thank them for all the support that Slovenia has received in the last 30 years. They assisted us then, 30 years ago, especially when uh, a few months later when it was about recognition of Slovenia, and they continue to be the best analysts for Slovenia in the Australian environment. Now, uh, uh, let me say that uh, once again, that I'm really happy that today we can celebrate together 30 years of Slovenia's uh, uh, independence. I would now like to invite you, it's, this is part one of my speech, no joke. Uh, now I would like to invite you to enjoy uh, uh, 
some food, the drinks, and also our excellent singer who moved from Slovenia to Australia two years ago will uh, sing a couple of traditional Slovenian songs. Thank you very much.